So GCN just posted a very controversial topic. An awful lot of debate, more than disc brakes, more than sock length, more even than Lance Armstrong. And it is veganism. And in particular, can you be a vegan professional cyclist? Let's get into it. So the reason I'm making this response video is because one, I'm vegan, two, I'm a cyclist, and three, I have a master's degree in nutrition. So talking about all three in one video really whets my appetite. So in this video, GCN interviews Nigel Mitchell, who is a sports nutritionist currently working with the Cannondale Dropback team and has worked in the past with Team Sky and British Cycling and Funny enough, his wife has been vegetarian for over 20 years. So the question is, can you be a vegan professional cyclist? It's a really interesting question that. And uh, uh, part of the whole idea for me looking at plant-based nutrition and vegan nutrition is, is this something that a professional athlete can do? And I 100% believe that somebody could be a vegan professional cyclist. The questions are is how they go about it to ensure that the practice doesn't compromise anything with their performance. So there you go, you can definitely be a vegan professional cyclist as long as you go about consuming a plant-based diet in the right way. There's great examples out there like David Zabriskie who has ridden the Tour de France and has won the USA National Time Trial Championship in 2007, 8, 9, 11, and 12. Yeah, the new uh, vegan diet for me is going pretty well too. It's been a great gradual process it wasn't something I kind of jumped into it uh, probably took about a year for me to gradually move into it the last thing I cut out was the eggs and uh, I'm feeling good with it. Christine Vardaros who got podium in 2014 at the Paris to Ancaster race and won the Santa Cruz Classic in 2004. I'm a pro cyclist for 13 years and I'm also a vegan for 13 years and a vegetarian for 23 years. And I've also been named to the US national team to race at World Championships and World Cups many, many times. Currently one of the top 50 uh, cyclists in the world. And I've been, I've been ranked even as high as sixth at one point. And that I must add is all on a vegan diet. Even now at the age of 44, I'm still kicking the asses of girls half my age. And that is due to the vegan diet, I'm sure. I always get, but doesn't your diet hold you back from being the best athlete you can be? The answer is no, of course not. Genetics actually holds you back more than anything else. And then the rest comes down to things like, you know, training, what kind of exercises you do, and diet and some other factors. What I can tell you for sure is that thanks to my diet, by far, absolutely without a doubt, competing better than my genetics would have uh, allowed. And I actually chose this diet, my plant-based diet, for its athletic advantages. It's now time for cycling shorts. And I should mention Lizzie Armstead, who has a number of wins, including multiple world championship titles, and has been vegetarian since the age of 10. People are always saying, don't you think you'd win more if you had a steak? And I'm like, well, maybe, you know, but I've, I've been a vegetarian all of my adult life since I was 10 years old, so I don't think it's kind of you know, it's not that I've got to age 18 and stopped. I've never sort of missed it. As long as I've been an athlete, I've been a vegetarian. So definitely paid more attention to my diet over the last sort of couple of years. And I think it has paid dividends, actually. And there are plenty of pros out there who have experimented with plant-based nutrition. So it's definitely becoming more popular amongst the pro peloton. Next, they talk about protein intake on a vegan diet and whether you can consume quality protein to keep up the performance. With protein, we've got these amino acids, the building blocks. And what we have is we've got the different amino acids and some of these are what we call essential in other words we need to get these from the diet and then the rest of them the body converts some of the others into the other amino acids so if we're not getting those essential amino acids from our foods then it will compromise the quality of what it can do in the body. But that doesn't mean to say that we can't get these essential amino acids from non-meat and dairy foods. My, my belief with it at the, at the moment still is that what we need to look at doing is looking at getting a range of foods, a range of protein foods, so it gives us this range of amino acids. So Nigel did say there that one can consume enough essential amino acids through plant-based foods, but his belief is that we should be eating a variety of protein in order to get a range of essential amino acids. I'm not quite sure what he means by a variety of protein. I don't know if he's talking about plant-based protein or if he's including animal protein in that as well. But in my professional opinion, I think that if you eat a variety of whole plant-based foods, you're gonna get enough protein as they all contain the essential amino acids, but they do come in different ratios, of course, among the different plant-based foods. 
So a variety can help secure that you're getting enough essential amino acids, but it also just makes it more fun having a variety in your diet. If we're an active athlete and we're uh, using in the region of, let's say, 4,000 calories a day, then there'd be no problems at all in getting the, the amount of protein that we require from plant-based foods. So I, I'm, I believe fully that somebody, if somebody wants to be a professional cyclist, the challenge isn't around getting the foods, the challenge will be is when they're away at races, being able to maintain that or when they're traveling. But I would say that there is certain supplements that I would also suggest that your, uh, your vegan cyclist would, would consider taking. But these would be probably the same sort of products that I'd get somebody to consider who was not a vegan as well. I get that it can be challenging for pros when they're away for races or traveling internationally, but these days most teams tend to have catering and are able to provide cyclists with pretty much anything they want. Most of the carbohydrates that they require in order to get them through a race are vegan by default anyway, as long as they don't have animal products added to their rice, their potatoes, their pasta, etc. So I don't see how that can be a problem, but I do see how it can be challenging for sure. Now I do think that the supplementation, as he mentioned, can be helpful. Now this doesn't apply for everyday riders like you and me. I don't think supplementation is that important, but for pros who require so much more nutrition, who put their bodies through so much stress, and also want to stay as light as possible throughout the day so they don't have all that food in their stomach bouncing around, I think supplementation can be a good idea. And also some processed foods as well that are not going to be as high in fiber as whole foods are going to be. That way they can get more calories into their system without having that much bulk. I know it sounds funny and it doesn't apply to general nutrition terms, but for cyclists, for athletes who burn so many calories and have to have that energy source in them, taking up as little space as possible inside their system, it's really important. And this idea with supplementation doesn't just apply to vegans. There are many non-vegan athletes who are on supplementation. I've never seen an athlete that I've worked with, whether it be professional cyclists, whether it be any sport, anybody that I feel has been compromised because they're not getting sufficient protein. Interesting. Nigel has never seen an athlete he's worked with being compromised from not getting enough protein. Seriously guys, getting enough protein is so easy on any diet, especially if protein supplements are involved. Don't get me wrong, I definitely think protein is important for so many reasons, but in the field of sports nutrition, I just think it's way overemphasized. And stepping outside of cycling for a minute, there are plenty of vegan athletes out there in pretty much every sport and are doing just fine keeping up with their protein intake. So protein is not a problem if you're eating a plant-based diet or any diet as long as you're eating enough calories. So can you be a pro vegan cyclist? Hell yeah! As long as you can sustain five to six watts per kilo that is. So I will have the link to the full interview in the description below. GCN is going to be posting recipe videos soon with Nigel, which I'm really hoping they're going to be vegan recipes. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the like button if you got something out of it. Subscribe for more videos on plant-based nutrition, fitness, and lifestyle tips. And I will see you guys in the next video.